quite a bit of debris in the field and debris is a big concern for the shuttle folks and we want to keep an eye on it to make sure we don't have anything that's going to threaten the vehicle. Now, Matt, you can see that this is, uh, well, this is camera Echo 4, uh, E004. It's on the uh, corner of the MLP deck and uh, very similar in field of view to uh, the camera we just looked at. Uh, what One of the things I like to point out is you can see one of the camera box enclosures we were talking about a little bit earlier uh, on the left-hand side of the frame right in front of the, uh, the left SRB. Yeah, and in fact, uh, uh, as we mentioned earlier in the, uh, in the piece, there's about 125 cameras or so actually more uh, that document any given launch and so for brevity in this piece and to make it watchable we had to have a lot of a lot of film hit the cutting room floor and it was really difficult for me to to cut a lot of it out because I loved all of the footage I, I'm, I'm a fan of each and every camera uh, but that little camera there didn't get its uh, its day in the shade that that uh, that film of the booster had to uh, we'll have to have that for the director's cut in the future <laughs> And uh, just to give you a perspective, um, this camera uh, originally captured the scene at uh, 400 frames a second, so it's being played back at uh, 24 frames, so it's about 1 16th uh, uh, of the speed um, that it was actually captured at um, to give us a real-time view. Now you can see here how absolutely gorgeous the day was, and as we mentioned earlier, it was about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So in the film industry, they call this magic hour, and, and there's no question about it that this is one of the best times of day to take photographs of the shuttle. You have these rich colors and uh, just a beautiful blue sky uh, to sort of highlight all of this. So um, I, I find these pictures second to none in all of the launch imagery that's been taken. Um, I should say that these boosters uh, shed about 10,000 pounds of mass per second once they're lit up. Uh, and that's each, so it's 20,000 pounds combined. And you can really get the feel of, of uh, that awesome magnitude by looking at these images. There you see a piece of debris in the right, sort of doing a ballet in, in uh, slow motion there. This is some tie-down string from some water membranes under the SRBs that we'll talk about in a few moments. You know, teams go through this, uh, this is engineering footage, and the teams go through this and identify everything they see in it. Okay, this uh, this is uh, camera Echo 36, and this is uh, this camera is located on the fixed service structure at the 255 foot level. Uh, we refer to the fixed service structure as the FSS. It's a uh, 16 millimeter camera uh, with a uh, 16 millimeter uh, focal length lens, and the effective shutter speed is about a 12 hundredth of a second, similar to some of the other ones that we've seen. Um, this is a long clip. Um, in fact, this is probably the longest clip uh, that that I sort of chose for the uh, the production. There's a lot going on in here, but it looks a little boring for a while because those engines are on for a long time. So we're still at 400 frames a second here, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there you see the main engines igniting. You can see all of this water pouring into the flame trench. There, there's the big flash, uh, the hydrogen and the oxygen lighting up. I should tell you that uh, coming out of that external tank, uh, inside there are the cryogenic propellants, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, 750 gallons a second of liquid hydrogen is pouring into that engine cluster and 280 gallons a second of liquid oxygen. All of these uh, things being combined uh, instantly, effectively instantly, to, uh, to create this fantastic combustion process, burning 3,000 pounds of um, propellants to turn it into water vapor every second and it's almost invisible when it comes out of the engines. So the engines are, are turning on now and you can sort of see them glowing against the water pouring into the flame trench. That water's there uh, primarily to deaden the acoustic noise and to keep things cool. Um, and you've got a good look at the belly of the orbiter here. One of the purposes of this camera is to look to see if we lose any tiles uh, due to the shock of, of ignition of the solid rocket boosters. Now you're going to see the boosters turn on in just a couple of minutes and you see those red sort of ribbed uh, surfaces there inside the, the flame trench. Those are actually um, membranes to hold water and those will get burned away and you'll sort of see that in the film when the boosters fire. And there you see them right there and there's water in there that's sort of, uh, that's sort of getting jarred loose and turning into steam. Uh, and, I, and I'm assuming, I don't know for sure, that it, it prevents uh, sort of a recirculation of the exhaust at liftoff. Probably, again, uh, acoustic deadening noise. And there you see those boosters firing off. If you look in the upper uh, left-hand corner, you see the, um, uh, the umbilical uh, falling backwards there. 
and then look at how the uh, space shuttle main engines are punching through that that uh, that water in the flame trench. That's really cool. Yeah, that is it is quite a dramatic shot, and the uh, you can see the uh, auto exposure control on the uh, on the lens as we've talked about. Um, on some of the other views, really helping to be able to see the detail on the uh, the SSMEs uh, punching that hole, as well as looking at the plume from the for the from the SRB, um, and seeing the uh, the edge of the, uh, the the belly of the orbiter too. You see the, the SSMEs aim a little bit off uh, kilt there, and you can see them hitting the uh, the upper part of the mobile launch platform as they rise off. Amazing that they capture all that detail in the S uh, the SRB plumes. It's good stuff. It's a fantastic clip, it, it, you know, yeah. it really is. This is a uh, camera Echo 41. This is on the fixed service structure on the FSS at the 255 foot level. It's a uh, 10 millimeter focal length on the 16 millimeter camera. It's a really interesting view. You know, Matt, you want to provide some more details about what we're seeing? Yeah, you can see the boosters have already fired in this big uh, umbilical structure that you see swinging back. Uh, it's actually very massive. The plate on the end of that is about a foot and a half by three foot uh, square. You'll see a close-up of that in a little bit. That's the um, the uh, ground umbilical to uh, hook up to the uh, the venting for the hydrogen tank, and, and it's got some uh, nitrogen and helium purge lines and some instrumentation to go with it. A pretty complicated structure. you get a picture of that in a minute. If you look at the MLP or the mobile launch platform, you'll see all the water coming out of the rainbirds under the launch pad. And again, our active uh, exposure uh, kicking in there and giving us a great shot of the plumes as the vehicle clears the tower. Look on the right, you can just see a tad of the SSME uh, burning there, that little blue cone. Fantastic detail there, isn't it? Yeah, it's a great shot. Echo 40 is one of my, my favorite shots, Matt, and this is on the, uh, the fixed service structure on the FSS at the 275 foot level, just a bit higher than the two previous um, uh, views we, we saw. And this is uh, really an incredible view of uh, not only the orbiter, but the, uh, the beautiful ocean, the late spring day in Florida, and very nice lighting uh, on the tank, and uh, as well as you'll see on the orbiter surfaces. Yeah, it truly is a magic hour on this. Uh, that orange tank, for those that aren't all that familiar with the shuttle, that's foam. It's insulating foam on the tank to keep the cryogenic propellants cold on the inside. Uh, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen are pretty chilly when they get into their liquid state. Uh, you can actually virtually look into the cockpit here. If you look carefully, you can see the ocean right through the window, just briefly there for a moment. Kind of fun. Uh, there's discovery in all its glory. This, this uh, engineering view is to look at uh, any possible issues with the tiles or the thermal protection system on the vehicle. And uh, look at that, absolutely gorgeous. You can see some of the flakes of ice sort of tracking the vehicle as it moves upwards. Remember, uh, as we mentioned earlier, that 3,000 pounds of water vapor a second is coming out of the uh, space shuttle main engines on the back. It's pretty incredible and it's virtually invisible. All right, this view is of, uh, of a structure we call the GUP, which is the uh, ground umbilical carrier plate, which attaches to the ground umbilical carrier assembly, sometimes called the GUCA. That plate is about a foot and a half by uh, three foot. It's a sizable plate. You don't really capture the scale in this, and you can see the vehicle is now lifted up and it's taking off. That umbilical peels back right at uh, solid rocket booster separation or uh, detonation. Hey Matt, this is uh, camera 33, and this is at, on the FSS. It's at the 235-foot uh, level, um, and is using a uh, fairly long uh, focal length lens. It's, uh, and you can tell by the field of view that it is a long focal length lens, and it's 75 millimeters. 
Now, if you look, you can see the booster's kind of surging. It's not a continuous uh, pass. It sort of pushes and then slows down a little bit. And what you're seeing there is the natural frequency of the booster thrust. Um, I believe it was on the order of about seven hertz, uh, seven cycles a second. And you can see that go by and hear the, uh, the aft skirt of the booster is going by with a really nice tight shot of the, uh, the exhaust. This camera view is uh, on the pad perimeter. It's located at camera site three. It's about 1,273 feet away from the, uh, from the vehicle. And it's the first in a series of the 35 millimeter cameras, which we'll be seeing in the upcoming uh, sequences. Uh, there's a lens on here. The focal length is 500 millimeters or so. And the effective uh, exposure um, is a 1 450th of a second. And the camera's running at 180 frames per second. Yeah, it's a beautiful shot, and uh, this is going to, as uh, Kevin said, it's first in the 35 millimeter shots. They're a little better quality uh, because they've just got more surface area to put an image on. Um, you can see the SSMEs firing and uh, all in nominal operation here. And uh, as soon as they pull away from the pad, you'll see the left booster in the background uh, centered between the two service tail masts. And just a gorgeous uh, shot right there, looking at the steam coming off the SSMEs. And uh, this is a fantastic uh, capture of what, what remains behind after the vehicle clears the towers. You have all of this water and steam uh, being pushed around in this amazing uh, hostile acoustic environment. I mean, look at what's going on there. This is all acoustic noise and, and shock uh, coming from the boosters and the SSMEs. Camera 63 is uh, located on the pad perimeter. Uh, one of the camera sites. It's uh, 1,270 feet uh, from the vehicle and it's using a 105 millimeter lens. The uh, camera's running at 180 frames a second and that's pushing about 630 feet of film through the camera uh, per minute. Uh, quite, quite, a, quite a fast rate, uh, especially for 35 millimeter. Yeah, you can see the sparkers going there just getting ready to turn uh, the main engines on. And uh, in the background, you see the water tower. That's where all that fresh water comes from to flood the pad, to keep it chilled and deaden uh, a lot of that acoustic noise that we've already seen uh, what it looks like uh, in the plume. Uh, absolutely gorgeous day, really accentuated by this shot. Blue sky in the background. Goes great with the, uh, the white exhaust plume coming out there. And uh, you can see a lot of splashing and uh, stuff jetting out from all different directions at the bottom. You'll see more of that in the shots that are coming up. Uh, th this shot is going to be the first uh, of a, a bunch of different views as we march counterclockwise around the pad to look at it from different angles. And uh, there you can see the boosters have fired and you see it all coming out the other side of the flame trench. And uh, beautiful shot of it coming off the pad. And the lighting at uh, 5 o'clock in the afternoon on this uh, late spring day is just about perfect from this camera view. Of course, it won't be perfect uh, for all the views, but uh, certainly is a nice angle and really eliminates the, the vehicle as well as the structure very nicely. Yeah, yeah I like when, uh, when the vehicle leaves. Uh, I left a lot of these shots run long because I thought it was kind of neat to see what happens afterwards. And you can just see the, the whole service structure here being engulfed in steam and, and exhaust from the solid rocket motors. Now one interesting thing about the 30, this particular 35 millimeter format is uh, earlier we mentioned about the time code and the iRig time code is uh, burned in with an LED display and on the 35 millimeter format it's actually in part of the the image area because the 35 millimeter format has uh, four sprockets per frame uh, 